to Centre Court for 2021. Thanks to TAC, how safe is your car? So Centre Court, I've brought back my co-host from last year and now back on court herself, Ash Brazel. So great to see you out there on oh, the weekend. Thanks, V. I'm actually surprised you called me back up. I was like, <laughs> does she like me? Does she not? <laughs> now that I'm playing, um, I'm, yeah, I'm so glad to be back. Um, and not just back here, but back on court. It was awesome to be back out there. But one thing that um, was a big shock to me is how quick the game is. <laughs> I don't know if it was like that before I did my knee, but it was quick. And netball you, is quick. Netball is so quick. Yeah. I mean, when you compare it to the footy field, it's such a smaller amount of space that you've got to get around it. You did a mountain of work. How did you pull up after the game? Pretty sore. And um, I don't, I don't want to um, talk too much about footy, but I actually pull up more sore in a netball game than I do footy game. So I think that, I don't know if that's the court or I think we underestimate how physical netball actually is. But yeah, like I said, so nice to be back out there. And you talk about physicality. I mean, I'm sure you're giving it just as much as you're getting it. I'm an angel. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if people watch my game. I don't contact at all. Like, okay. <laughs> and if the umpire calls okay. it, I always give them that cheeky look like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> now, this uh, year on Centre Court, we want to make sure that we are talking to you as the fans, but also engaging with you as much as we can. So we... I very much love our Netball Twitter family out there. We know you're the ones talking about the games all the time on the weekends. We're on our social media too, reading everything that you are writing. So we want to make sure that Centre Court is always featuring some of your tweets. And always we will talk about some of the things that you are finding as topical issues each and every weekend. So on that B though, I reckon, I know the Twitter fans in Netball, I love them. I love reading all the tweets. There's so many funny ones out there and just good content. But please make sure you hashtag centre court just so we can yes. make sure we're all over it and we can feature as many as possible and hopefully even get you on the show this year. Yes, we want to get plenty of our Netball Twitter family on the show as guests. We can just link it up via Zoom and make sure that we hear it from you exactly what you're thinking about the game because I said during your game, Braz, <laughs> as part of the commentary team, I made this comment that the post was wobbling at one stage and I think Steph Wood was taking a shot and she got called for hell ball because she was, was waiting. It was Gabby. Oh, it was Gabby, Gabby, sorry, yeah, and the post wouldn't stop, so she, you know, and I was like, defenders use the post all the time. It's our third defender there in the circle, and I actually think that's okay. We don't push our shooters into it, but we step across to block the baseline, and if the shooter keeps going and feels like they're going to squash between the post and us, then that's on them. That's not on us. What do you think? Classic defender. <laughs> I don't even want to hear it, B. I think if, if I was purely just a wing defence, I'd be all over it. But now that I'm a centre and I've got to get the ball into the shooters, <laughs> that's hard enough. So, is, but no, do shooters, not touch the post. But shooters, if the baseline is blocked, do not go through it. There's no space for you. You can't just run and do what you like in that circle. So, so what was the verdict? Did you get the thumbs up or the thumbs down by the Well, people? I think some people were agreeing with me, but sarcastically <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> but anyway, it's all fun and games, and that's why we love hearing from you. So tag us in there and also hashtag Centre Court, and we'll make sure we look at it for every single episode that we do. It's now time to get to the agenda, thanks to TAC. Make safety features a priority in your next car. Visit howsafeisyourcar.com.au. The first one I want to get to is the fact extra time is back. And we saw that in a pretty incredible game between the Swifts and the Firebirds. Are you a fan of extra time? Do you like extra time? I do love the extra time. I find a tie or a draw so frustrating as an athlete because you play for 60 minutes, you want a result. But the one thing I do like about it on that, as much as I don't like the draw, I love that we can now play the extra time. And if it's still even, then it's even. Yeah. And I think that's what excites me because it's, it's so frustrating when you get to the end and you know it's extra time. Who's got the, I guess, the tanked or the experience, which I thought the Swifts in the end had that Definitely. bit more experience over the Firebirds. But the fact it can still be a draw, I think when you're down in that extra time, the fact that you can think, okay, we can still get there to still earn those two points is a, is a big thing for me. And the fact that it's five minutes, do you like that? That the extra time is just going to be one block of five minutes, that's it? It can end in a draw at the end of that. The only time will it go further than that is when we get into finals. But for the uh, rounds, it's just a five minute extra time. I would have thought five minutes isn't long enough. But after watching this game, I think five minutes is plenty and, and it's, it's quick. You're going to put your best seven on. You, ne you only have five minutes to do, play the best netball you can. So I actually think it's a great thing. And do you like that the super shot is in play in the five minutes? Uh, <laughs> question without notice, question. clearly. 
Uh, no. You don't want it to be in. I like that it is. It makes it exciting. You don't know what's going to happen. And also, it obviously brings the goal attacks into the play as well because they can do some serious damage in that super shot zone. I can't believe, as a defender, you just said that. Yeah, but no, I think it adds such variety. Even defenders have to change up what they're doing when they know the super shot's in play. Yeah. Otherwise, they can, you know, sit back onto the tall shooter. They can't afford to do that when there is a small goal attack running around that can often be quite damaging in that point so I mean your goal attacking Gabby Sinclair you would probably want oh, her shooting the super 100%. shot and you, I think if that's you, you change it up you know would, would it be questioning does Shimona even play in those last five minutes do you have the two smalls on that you we know they can shoot that long distance but on that defense like that you were talking about how they actually change being my first game back in that environment where it is the two point shots that's one thing that got me it wasn't the players actually taking the shots but how defenders actually defended and that's where I thought Lightning really beat us on the weekend is because when it was the last five minutes, it didn't matter who it was, if it was um, Pumza, if it was Kate, Shimon, if it was Carla, they just stood in the two-point zone so Shimo Shimona looked free. Felt good for us, but yep. in the end it was a one point. So I actually loved the way it was played this year, uh, in our game because being out there then to watching it, it's a completely different ball game. Yeah, it sure is. Another team that I want to talk about is the West Coast Fever, but in particular their player or their new recruit in Sasha Glasgow Go. We saw her come on in the third quarter against the Vixens. And I think Sasha Glasgow is probably one of the most underrated recruits that we have seen this season. And I say that because Fever have been a team that we know are very strong. We know that they are coming from negative 12 points behind because of their salary cap breach. But Alice Teague Neild and Kaylee Stanton were their shooters last year. And, and when they rotated them on and off, there wasn't a huge change in game. But Alice Teague Neild stepped up, played well, but then in that third quarter where they needed a change, Katie Ann Dehaney had come on into that game. She was really causing them havoc down in the fever attack and making Janelle Fowler think differently. Mm. And then bring on Sasha Glasgow, and she was it was a real game changer for them, and I think it's going to be a huge asset for them this season. Yeah, and I think coming up against them, like, doesn't matter what team you are, you actually don't know who's going to start. Is it going to be Alice or is it going to be Sasha? Because they're both players that can start and play well. One thing that I think Fever still have up their sleeve, though, is Alice in wing attack. Yeah. Because she is, I think, in that goal circle, like besides Janelle, they've got the two goal attacks. Alice is the more experienced player. She feeds Janelle so well, and it wouldn't surprise me if we do see those three um, when it comes down to, I guess, an overtime or something where they actually need to score. Love Emma Kosh in there, but I just think Alice holds that experience over. Yeah, and she can, she knows how to feed. She's a very smart feeder, and that's the role that she often does play. Another thing on West Coast Fever, Braz, I'm going to say they're one of the most resilient teams at the moment because of what they have been going through. So if you didn't see in the lead up to the first round, Perth went into lockdown. They weren't sure whether they were going to come over here or be able to get out of Perth. They were at the airport. They then got sent home and they then had to pack their bags again. And so they are on this rocky roller coaster ride every single week. And straight after the game, when we came off air with the commentary team, we were listening into uh, the um, press conference that was happening over in WA because they thought they were going back into lockdown. They couldn't fly out Sunday. They had to delay their flights till Monday. They, there's just a lot that they're having to deal with right now. Yeah. And, and you even go back further to that, B, like when it was the Constellation Cup, everyone, obviously, you were missing your Diamonds players, but they weren't just missing their three Diamonds players, they were missing their head coach. And it wasn't just for the two weeks that we got to watch netball on TV, it was for the two weeks quarantine, the week that they played, and then they had to have two weeks in Northern Territory. So that's over a month without three players and a head coach. So I think Stacey would obviously rely heavily on her assistant coaches but you talk about being in COVID, um, being in the lockdown, running to the airport uh, over a month without a coach. They're actually dealing with a lot that hasn't really been talked about. And such a huge amount of travel time that they've got to endure as well, which they didn't have to last year with the hub. So for me, I think keep an eye on fever because I feel like they're building this mental strength beyond what they do out there on the court that, I mean, we'll talk about the salary cap in a minute, but the fact that they're minus 12 behind, mm. I think they're a pretty strong team that will be able to find their way through that. Do you agree? Totally agree. And I think they've got a point to prove now.
And one other thing on the agenda, it has to be the shattering news to, that Kira Austin, the Giants shooter and the Diamonds gun is now unfortunately uh, out for the season with an ACL injury. We saw her go down during their game against the Thunderbirds. I mean, I don't want to necessarily ask you because you've been in that same position, but how hard is it now for a team to readjust? Oh, it's extremely hard. And, you know, I don't even know Kira and I watched that and cried because mm. I now know what this poor girl has to go through to get back on court. And the fact that she's made the diamonds, she played amazing in New Zealand. And what I think what broke me the most is we're in round one. So she's done the whole preseason. She's done all of the hard work. She's made a name for herself. And to, to lose her so early, it's just, yeah, I'm heartbroken for her. But... She's resilient, she's strong, she's proven herself now. So for me, I think she'll definitely come back bigger, better and stronger. And, and it's a really good opportunity for Kira to actually work on her weaknesses and make her strengths even stronger. And we saw when she went down, it looked like she did slip on the decals. And we know in basketball, Andrew Bogut has been really outspoken about the decals in the NBL and how they are causing injuries. People are slipping over on them. The Australian Basketball Players Association has had to come out and back it. I know a sponsor's pulled the decals off the court in basketball. How much of it is it an issue? Do you notice the decals being slippery or a different surface to, what, to the normal floorboards when you're out there? Yeah, I, I obviously don't notice it that much. It's pretty much just in the circle. Um, you have other, you have some courts, I know Adelaide do it, where their whole circle's covered. I don't think most, normally it's just the two point shot that's covered. Um, but yeah, I know at our training, um, we had the decal, we don't have the decal anymore. But um, what I noticed, it wasn't really how slippery that decal is, it's more going from grip to a different surface. So you're continually trying to, yep. I guess, pick, can I dodge off this, can I not? And it just changes. So your body's got to get used to what you're actually running on. Um, but yeah, it's, I, think, I think it's a really good point to look into, but I think it's going to be really hard because every play is different. Um, and you just saw it was a, a jumping move that she does day in, day out. And unfortunately, when you do your knee, it, it happens in a millisecond. It so. Does. Who knows at what point in that time she actually did her knee. And our netball Twitter family, they were saying that there's been a lot that have been happening uh, in Adelaide at Priceline Stadium. And I know there's a few people who are looking into that just to see if, that, if there's any correlation between that. Um, but on a positive, when you look at the Giants and their attack end, I know you guys played a practice match, the Magpies, against the Giants in pre-season. And there was one shooter that really did stand out to you, and that wasn't Kira Austin uh, either, or Joe Harton. Who was it? No, it was Sophie Dwyer, and I think she is unbelievable. I actually... I, I'm gutted for Kira, but I'm really excited that Sophie gets to put her hand up and, and really... I guess for us, see what she's got. I love seeing this young talent come through and the fact that she was a third shooter in the Giants, she could actually be a starting seven player in any other team. So um, I know Kira's going to get behind her and, and be an amazing support for Sophie. But yeah, I think as much as it, it's going to hurt, it's, yeah, I think they're still in good hands. <laughs> that was the agenda thanks to TAC. How safe is your car? Now, Braz, it's time to throw it over to you for Brazilians. Ooh, B, forgot about my segment. How <laughs> exciting. Where's my drum roll? <laughs> Woo! No, for me, um, this, this year, or my, the very first one, it's going to be for what we just talked about. It's all about Kira Austin and when she went down, but it's also about the Adelaide Thunderbirds and the support they threw around her. You look here, you have the tweet from Shamira Sterling wishing you a speedy recovery and Kira Austin replying to that. But what I loved about this is when she went down, the first person, and like as soon as she hit the deck, Shamira Sterling was right there, grabbed her leg, was making sure she was okay. And it looked like Shamira was just in as much shock as um, Kira was. And then you had Matilda who was second there. So... The Brazilian this week goes to the two Adelaide Thunderbirds defenders because what I saw then, it, it wasn't just about the win or the loss. It was just at, in that moment, they, they cared about her well-being and they wanted to support her. And I think that just shows where netball's at. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's bigger than the game and... I just loved seeing that. Yeah, me too. And another thing that I loved seeing was in your game, at the very end, you got into a huddle, Magpie, Sunshine Coast Lightning and Steph Wood 
took that time to actually welcome you and Kelsey Brown back and say how great it was to have you both back out there playing and how much... I just love that. Were you expecting that? No, I wasn't. And I think, like, I wanted to talk about that because... And that was going to be my Brazilian up until I saw the tweets. <laughs> um, but as a player and when it's directed to you, like, I felt so loved, cared for and protected in that circle. And the fact that it wasn't even someone from my own team, someone saying, like, it's so great to see you back out on court and... Um, yeah, it's just, it's really nice. And, you know, I think being an older player, everyone's like, you know, how long you got left in the game? When you have moments like that, it's, yeah, like, I want to play forever I'll because play forever. these <laughs> girls are amazing. And the fact that it's not, yeah, like I said, it's not a teammate, it's an opponent. It just makes, it means so much more. Absolutely. It's now time for the nitty gritty. Thanks to Lexus of Berwick, your hybrid destination of choice. Visit lexusofberwick.com.au. I get to drive a hybrid at the moment. I've got the UX250. And spoiled, spoiled. I'm going to take you for a drive in it because I'm actually really <laughs> loving the hybrids. But anyway, that's not what this segment is about right now. <laughs> what I wanted to talk about is something that came up on ABC Offsiders with former Australian Diamonds coach Lisa Alexander talking about the West Coast fever salary cap breach. I think it should have been more. I think it should have definitely been at least half a season. And I was actually surprised. I was thinking the points were still two points for a win. So the 12 points, uh, look, I think it was, a, it was a, a very, very bad thing to happen for netball. The integrity issues all sorts of things that went on, um, I think there must have been, should have been a greater penalty than just the, the three games. Whew, tough words there from Lisa Alexander, but I tend to agree with her as well. I was surprised when I realised that the salary cap penalty was only going to be three games. And now that you see a team like West Coast Fever, they are so good. They have so much scoring power. They can win games. Yes, they're going to have to set themselves up to be able to, you know, continue winning for the rest of the season. But I don't think they're going to struggle making the finals. And I was really shocked to hear some, like Catherine Cox said it on the commentary, she didn't think they were going to make the finals at all. I don't think it's going to be hard for them to make the finals. Oh, no. And, you, you know, for me, they're going to make finals. They're an amazing side. They're fierce. They're strong. They've got Janiel Fowler. Like, they are an amazing side. And now they've got a point to prove. Mm. And three games for them. Like, they made the finals last year. I think they lost six games yes. or something. So I, I think they've got it within them to still make the finals, if not the grand final. They're, they're looking really strong. And the fact that they, they do have Glasgow now as a second shooter option. Yeah, it's amazing. But watching, listening to that, I just love that Lisa still got her hand in it and want to make such strong opinions Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. That's I, I love that too because I think it's important that we hear from everyone's point of view in, in things like that because the salary cap breach is a significant thing. We know it happened with Melbourne Storm uh, and they were heavily penalised. And But it's to set the standards. So. And I think that's a different B is when... You look at another code and you see what they did and you talk about it being heavy. For people that don't know, Storm lost all the points for the whole year. So they played a full year knowing it didn't matter if they won or they lost, they were never going to play finals. Mm. So that would just be heartbreaking in itself. Um, and, yeah, I think it for me it's still good that that fever can make finals because as an opponent I don't want to go in either thinking that they're playing just to... No. Yeah, play for no points. And even know. though we know they're minus eight now, so they were minus 12 points, now they're minus eight points because they won against the Vixens. They're still accruing percentage though, and they you know, they can get quite a high percentage having Fowler, read, uh, Fowler there as their shooter. So they're still going to get the percentage from all of these games that are almost not really counting until... And that's a good point because you're the first person that's talked to me about that and I didn't even think of that. Well, so. I didn't come up with that. Joyce Brown, <laughs> the, another former Australian coach, actually asked me that question. I was like, well, I'm not actually sure. I hadn't thought about that, but they are getting percentage that's going to help. And you're right, because you don't look at percentage until it counts. Yes. So it could count later on down it the track. It could count. <laughs> that was the nitty gritty, all thanks to Lexus of Berwick. Okay, now I want to talk about social scoop. This is a new segment for us. We've spoken a lot about our netball Twitter family. And one thing that I loved hearing and seeing and reading about, and I think I even made this mistake in commentary, was from Erin Delahunty talking about there are no points in netball. There's a reason Super Netball chose to use the two goal super shot as Oh, it, the terminology when it's introduced and it's a bit of a gimmick last season because there are no points in netball, but there's goals. Okay, so we're saying one goal 
and a two-goal super shot, not a two-point super shot. Terminology is really important, and I know when I've worked across other sports, if you say the wrong terminology, the fans really get into you for not really knowing the game. Even umpires and referees and, you know, making sure you get that right. So what do you want to call it? So we've got to call it goals. Every, so it's a two... It's, so it's a two-goal super shot. It's a one goal that you score in a game. There's no points in netball. I know, but I'm the opposite. I know <laughs> it's, it's bad, but I just think a goal is when the ball goes through the ring, but the point is what you get. So I know we talked about Janelle Fowler last year and she almost scored 1,000 goals, goals, but in my eyes it was points because did the ball go through the ring 938 times or whatever it was? Yeah, but... They're still like, she'll either shoot two goals when she's in the super shot zone or one goal when she's in the normal zone. I know, but I just... <laughs> okay, All Netball them... Twitter family, <laughs> help us out. Even we need the explanation about what's right. Yeah, and that's the thing. Maybe no Netball Australia knows. need to come out and confirm this is exactly how we're going to be talking about and it. And this is what I want, be, and I reckon we bring it in next, next week. Okay. We need... I know other sports, they've got like the AFL, they've got the Coleman Award. Yeah, um, the and Coleman Medal the Coleman for Medal. whoever keeps the most goals. Yeah, which is massive. In a season. Yeah, yep. and I want to do it, and I'm throwing it out here, you can say No, no. let's do it now, <laughs> let's do it now. But I would like it to be who scores the most two points slash goals <laughs> in the season. And, cause, and I don't want to count the one points because... Because everyone does that. Yeah, and also <laughs> Janelle Fowler's just, we don't even need the award. It's probably going to okay, go to Janelle. it's going to go to her, yeah. Um, but I want to I want to bring goal attacks into the game. Who scores the most two points? Because Steph Wood in our game um, scored a whole heap. Gabby Sinclair got one. Khalifa got one. I just think it's it, it's exciting. And the fact that it only goes for five minutes each quarter. Yep. Come on, goal attack, step up. So I reckon we have a leaderboard next week. Okay. So it's our super shooter medal. Is that what we're going to call it? Or do we name it after a former player? Who used to nah. shoot lots of long bombs? No, because it wasn't back. It, this okay, is a new all right. Thing, a new, all right, maybe, maybe that we can name it after whoever wins it this year. It will be That's a good idea. And, and like, we're going back to the Twitter. We're going back to the fans. I want you to make put it out there on Twitter, on Facebook, super whatever you shot, want. Shoot a medal. What, do, what should we call it? <laughs> what should we call it? Help us out. We want your intel <laughs> and to know who we should call it after. Yeah. <laughs> who do you think is going to win it? If you just had to roughly pick someone this year, who do you think it'd be? Steph Wood. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I think she's... I'm going to pump Gabby Sinclair up. Gabby though, Sinclair. And I'm going to make sure at training, it's all she is doing is shooting the two points. Okay, let's also take a look at the games that we will be seeing in round two. You are first up against the Giants. How Magpies turn it around? I think um, for us, what we've been talking about um, after last week's game is how much we throw the ball away. And it's just so disappointing. Like, obviously, Lightning played well. They were the better team on the day. They deserved the points. But when it's so hard to get intercepts now, we threw 28 balls away. And I think it was like 21, 22 of them were in the goal third. So I think it's us stepping up and making sure that we don't make that many errors and let our defenders down. The game I'm looking forward to most, or that I think it's going to be the closest, is going to be Fever and Swifts. What a showdown that is going to be. That takes place on Saturday afternoon. Thanks so much. That's another show. That's our first show. Our show. Done. Good job, Braz. Go us. I can't uh, believe we didn't make that many errors, V. I'm happy. As <laughs> always, <laughs> bringing lots of good stuff to the table. Netball Twitter family, make sure you keep talking to us during the week so we can keep featuring you and hopefully having some of you join us on Zoom as well as some other netty guests that we'll have joining us each and every week. So thanks for watching Centre Court and a big thanks to TAC. Make safety features a priority in your next car. Visit howsafeisyourcar.com.au.